Lots of interesting things going on in the auto industry. Our THG team stays up to date on all the latest and greatest weeding through the boring stuff so you don't have to. And then we share the highlights on car inventories, pricing, and other important information most likely to impact your future car buying decisions. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homer Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today's automotive news update is brought to you by the Homework Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a highly intelligent group of auto experts to boot. If you appreciate us working hard on keeping you firing on all cylinders with our great videos and you want to support our efforts, well, there's plenty of opportunities for you to get on board and show us a little appreciation. Start by recommending us and help us get to that million subscriber mark. Let's roll. If you ever wondered why so many dealers tend to be under one roof, it's because Big dealer owners and automotive groups are always trying to snatch up the little guys. For example, after taking a short break from swallowing up these little dealers, AutoNation, Penske Automotive Group, Group One Automotive, and Sonic Automotive all indicated that they are once again shopping for franchise dealerships to increase their own store count. I don't see that as a benefit to consumers as this only increases the amount of cooperation within the dealer group itself. And that has almost never brought about a transparent, fair, or honest business model in the car business. If you were hoping to see more cars on the lots this year, don't hold your breath. One of the things the pandemic taught dealers and manufacturers is that tight inventories can help boost the bottom line of the business. If you notice that prices seem to go up, not down, and dealers become more resistant to working with you, the customer, it's all connected to a supply and demand curve. Consider this, on the new car side, General Motors is expected to profit at least 10 billion this year and that's with their inventory of new cars and trucks being a third of what it's been in the past. If you're going to ask me, I'm going to say it's more of a permanent change in our industry. I really doubt you're going to see these really high levels of inventory that we saw in the past. If you ever wondered how secure your data was at a car dealership, well, you should be aware of ransomware hackers if you're not. Kia and Hyundai allegedly lost their network functions recently, to a ransomware hacker known as Doppelpamer Gang, who wanted a $20 million payday. For the record, Kia submitted a public statement denying this, saying that we can confirm that we have no evidence that Kia or any Kia data is subject to a ransomware attack. End quote. Well, that's kind of funny because Kia retailers said the dealer communications platform known as K Dealer was unavailable for several days. It hurt their sales and finance deals and made some warranty service impossible and locked vehicle owners out of mobile apps. This hit Kia harder than Hyundai, but news like this should make you think twice about what kind of information you're putting in the hands of car dealers who demand to know absolutely everything about you. I don't know if any of you bought a Chevy Bolt EV. I didn't. But if you ever had a chance to sit in one of those cars, you feel like you're doing a chin-up on your kneecaps. I have more leg room in a golf cart. Well, Chevy is launching the Chevy Bolt EUV, and they added more legroom so that big guys like me could actually fit in the car. That remains to be seen. It kind of makes you wonder who the people are who are designing these cars in the first place because I'm never impressed when I get into a vehicle and feel like I'm trying to shoehorn myself into a can of sardines. For you Jaguar lovers out there, it looks like they're going to give one more try to the Jag, giving it another chance, calling it the fourth reinvention of the car, the last roll of the dice. If you were keeping track, this is the fourth reinvention in the last five decades. Here's what I'd say if you're thinking about owning a Jaguar. New or used, these cars are much like owning a Mercedes or BMW. Cool to drive, but there's so much maintenance involved that it's a very expensive car to own. High payments on a new car, low maintenance. Low payments on an older car, very high cost maintenance. Either way, they cost about the same no matter how old they are. If you don't already have deep pockets when it comes to money, you're not a very good prospect for a Jaguar or a Mercedes or a BMW and perhaps some other cars out there. Unless you know how to turn a wrench in your own backyard and you don't mind fixing cars, well, then that would be a game changer. A couple of new looks coming in the SUV market. Mitsubishi is retooling their Outlander for 2022. Price is expected to sit right around 27000 which includes that pesky destination fee that many of you are always asking us about. Expect 20-inch wheels, more digital features on the dash, featuring a 181-horsepower engine with a very automatic transmission. They claim the third row has seating for up to seven people. Well, not just the third row, but up to seven people in the SUV. Well, 
I have a hunch they're not talking about seven people my size. Have you ever sat in the back row of any of these crossover SUVs claiming they're seven passengers? There's more room in an economy seat in the airline industry, and you're not getting any free peanuts or a cup of that glacier spring water either. Hyundai is adding a sport model for the Kona lineup. It's got a new console and instrument panel. The biggest change is the addition of the N-Line Sport model, which deletes the black plastic, that cladding stuff that was around the wheel arches, and gives it a more road-oriented look. The Kona N offers a turbocharged 2.0 liter and a dual-clutch automotive transmission, if you're keeping track. Meanwhile, Infiniti dealers have little frowns on their faces because the QX60 crossover SUV is several months away from its redesign. Dealers are upset because the old inventory, the QX50, is going to have to last them another three to six months and maybe more. So a little more on that later. A lot of you have questions about Vroom. You might not have known that AutoNation had a stake in the company. Vroom had a vendor agreement from January 2019 with AutoNation for vehicle reconditioning and repair services. That was just terminated. AutoNation CEO Mike Jackson said the vision just didn't pan out. We're working on a video project for Vroom, so those of you that are waiting for that, look for it soon. It's coming here to the Homework Guy channel. Mercedes is coming off the fifth generation of their C-Class sedans. And in the midst of all the talk about EV cars, well, Mercedes is saying they're not planning on going EV with this sedan anytime soon. They are ditching the bigger engines, however, and sticking with the four and six cylinder engines that have provided that predictable Mercedes performance. Tesla is launching a new high-tech U-shaped steering wheel, similar in design to those found on race cars, but with some major tech advances. Tesla already had their drive mode, which typically controls park, reverse, neutral, and drive functions, but that is going away. Elon Musk said on Twitter that this new driver assist system will guess your drive direction and it's a whole new level of reliance on electronics and computers to get it right. Hopefully, this turns out better than the experience that I had driving vehicles on a proving ground that had driver assist technology. My experience was with a Honda Pilot and I was fighting the vehicle the whole time on dry road conditions. I wasn't that impressed. But Elon Musk says that you can rest your hand on your knee most of the time while driving this car, and it's getting so good that you really don't need to drive. Well, we'll see. Maybe Elon will invite us out to one of the test tracks, and we'll show you guys how it works. Just when you think automakers have got it all figured out, there's another problem that could drive up the retail prices of new cars. There's a microchip shortage, believe it or not, right now that could reduce vehicle production by as many as 1.3 million vehicles. I'm not kidding. This is going to cost automakers nearly $52 billion in lost sales this year, while carmakers brag about their growing technological advances. All of their software still requires microchips to run. And up and down the supply chain, they're all fending for themselves to get the chips they need. You'd think they'd do a little cooperation. But since every car maker forecasts how many vehicles they plan to build, you'd think they'd get this right because you know exactly how many microchips are required to deliver those new cars to the market as soon as you put together your forecast. But I digress. This shouldn't be a stumbling block anymore is what I'm saying. Well, perhaps this is a good wake up call for all of them, but unfortunately for you, the car buyer, the reduction in new car output probably means that you'll be paying more money for new cars that make it to dealers with the needed chips. If you're concerned about the theft of your vehicle, you might think twice about buying a Dodge Charger. In Detroit, Michigan, metro area alone, more than a thousand of these were stolen last year, and some right off of the dealer lots. In Sterling Heights, one of the suburbs, police had four high-speed chases in just 10 days with stolen Dodge Chargers. Investigators haven't figured out how thieves are starting the cars, but apparently they must not be too hard to crack. The Dodge Charger Hemi and the Dodge Challenger Hellcat are listed as the top two stolen vehicles in the country with theft rates more than five times that of other cars. What's up with this, Dodge? Do you have something you want to offer us in the comment section down below? We'd like to hear why these uh, Challengers and Chargers are so easily stolen. I'll close with a bright spot for Ford Motor Company. You've heard about the power outages in Texas right in the middle of these major storms? Well, Ford had recently offered a 7.2 kilowatt generator on their F-150 hybrid trucks. This proved to be a lifesaver for several people who had them. While many people shivered in dark homes without heat, Stories began popping up around Texas of people connecting heaters, lights, refrigerators, all the necessities you need in a power outage to the bed of their trucks. Six gallons of gas will keep these generators running for 11 to 12 hours. Hearing these stories, 
a number of dealers in Texas began using the trucks to help out their communities, creating a shining star for Ford with their Pro Power onboard system. Go Ford! I'm a little impartial on this subject. I happen to drive a Ford truck myself. I've had great luck with them. If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us a great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there. We post updates and share videos on other platforms too and answer car buying questions there to help you out. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. And here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. We use your tips to sponsor great people like Maggie. This amazing young lady works with university students to help them get more out of their studies and ultimately more out of their lives after college. We enthusiastically sponsor Maggie and she thanks you in advance. But just like the Homework Guy team, Maggie knows that you change the world by what you do. If you can't do a tip today, no problem. Just help us get the word out. The Homework Guy team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. You're helping us get to the million subscriber mark. And by doing so, you're helping to bring fairness and honesty to the car business. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone.